Today we're going to talk about Bitwarden, an open source password manager. So let's get started. Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you about Bitwarden. It's an open source password manager. I've been using it for quite a while now, and uh, I actually moved to it from LastPass uh, after doing a little bit more research and wanting some uh, additional features and some additional security. So I really like Bitwarden. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them in this video or anything like that. It's just my personal experience. Um, I, there's a couple features in there I really, really like. One in particular I'll just share with you now is it can generate a one-time password for your account. So if you have, um, uh, let's say my YouTube account, right? So I have my username and password for my YouTube account. And, I, and if I want to two-factor that account, I can actually use Bitwarden itself to generate that second code instead of it texting it to me or having an app on my phone or having a YubiKey. Um, but uh, the real like key advantage of doing that is if I want to share accounts across uh, other team members or my family or anything like that, but I want those accounts to be two-factored, I can use Bitwarden to generate that second factor. So that was some of the key features I was looking for that I wasn't getting out of LastPass. The other thing I really, really wanted was security. So I moved from LastPass to Bitwarden. Uh, Bitwarden, I find, is slightly less user-friendly than LastPass, uh, but it's substantially more secure. A key reason why it's more secure is because it's open source, so the uh, security community has been able to uh, uh, scrutinize the code and make sure that things are in fact safe. Um, another great feature of Bitwarden is that you can host it yourself. We're not going to cover that in today's video. We're just going to use their uh, cloud offering. They have a free offering just like LastPass and they have a paid offering if you want a few more features, but the free offering does plenty uh, for the most users. So we're going to set up a new Bitwarden account. We're going to lock it down with a secure password and we're going to lock it down with a YubiKey. Uh, if you haven't seen YubiKeys before, again, not sponsored by them, but I've got a lot of videos on here about how to lock down accounts with YubiKeys. These are physical tokens that generate that second factor authentication. Uh, and without these keys, you can't get into the accounts, which is really uh, a really, really great security. So especially with your password manager, you want it's going to have all your passwords in there. And ideally, you won't know the passwords to your service accounts um, directly, you will only know the password to your password vault, in this case, Bitwarden. So you want to have a good username and password, like a strong passphrase. You want to have a physical token to get into that vault. And then from there, all your passwords are unique uh, to all your other services. So we're going to show you how to set all that up. Um, the other thing about Bitwarden that I really like, um, but some users might get a little bit nervous about, so we're going to make sure we cover that well today is that if you lose access to your Bitwarden account, so you forgot your password or you lose your second factor and you don't have a back backdoor second factor, again, we're gonna set all that up on the computer in a minute, um, you will not get access to your vault. It's completely encrypted, it's secured with those that information. So um, that to me is great, like this is my password vault, I wanna make sure that that data is safe, um, but you also don't want to lose access to the vault. So we're going to cover some of those tips today. So with that, let's go to the computer and set up the account and get it secured. Okay, guys, so here I'm on Bitwarden's website, and we're going to go through how to set up an account. Uh, and we're going to first use the free account. I don't think we need to pay for what we want to do today. Um, and so we're going to do a free account and set it up with a YubiKey. So let's get going. So we'll go ahead and hit create account. Uh, let me use my demo account. So master password. So this is a couple key things to keep in mind. So one, I would use a unique password, one that you've never used before. Start there. Ultimately, this password that you use should be the only place you use this password. Don't use this password anywhere else in any of your other ecosystems. Um, keep this unique. The other thing I would say is think more around past phrases than passwords. Uh, the longer the better, the stronger the better. Um, so password, you know, would be, you know, uh, I don't know, password or um, whatever kind of like phrase you use. Lots of people use their pets' names, things like that. Um, we want to get away from passwords, past phrases, you know, uh, Tristan Bolton's the best YouTuber kind of thing, you know, with an exclamation mark. So that kind of stuff, like use a sentence that you will remember, um, is, is a lot stronger of a password. So I'm going to use that one. I'm going to use uh, Tristan is a great YouTuber. And you can see it's strong. I can put some numbers in there. I can put one and an exclamation mark at the end, things like that. So... So I'm just going to show you on text edit what I'm actually doing. 
So I'm gonna put Tristan is a great YouTuber, one exclamation mark. So you can see I capitalized um, every single word, so that's a little bit different. You can change things around a bit, so maybe instead of an O, you can put a zero, things like that, those are pretty common. But again, think of phrases, think of a sentence that you're more likely to remember and throw in a little bit of numbers and punctuations there. It's gonna be a lot, uh, lot easier uh, for you to remember and a lot harder to hack. And again, you wanna make sure it's unique, so. I'll just paste those in. I'm just gonna put a password hint of YouTube. I really am not a big fan of password hints. Um, really, like this should be, whatever the hint is, should be really only you know the answer to. Um, don't uh, don't say, oh, it's my pet's name, or it's uh, you know the street that I grew up on, or anything like that. Anything that could be mined out of social media or through a phishing attack or something like that, um, that could then answer what the question is, uh, that's not good. But a hint that's kind of unique to you, that's very personal. Um, uh, in this case, I just have YouTube, and that might prompt my memory to say, oh, that's what it was based off of. Um, but uh, it, it's not enough that uh, somebody could, could get what the hint is and and then put together what the what the answer is. It's only only you can figure that out. If you're really in doubt, just don't put in a hint. I that's that's my recommendation. Don't put a hint, but if you need one, make sure it's just something you know. All right, so let's go ahead and hit submit. We now have a good uh, uh, password. Um, let's go ahead and lock this down further. So this is your vault. You can add items here, so you can enter in all your usernames and passwords. Here's the authenticator key that I was talking to you about. I'm going to show you how to lock down a Gmail account with this in a second. Um, and uh, that's basically your vault. You can add things in here. You can, if you're coming from another system like LastPass or something like that, you can actually go ahead and import um, your your information here using uh, CSV or JSON. They actually have really great documentation on how to export your passwords out of something like LastPass and import them into here, so you don't have to re-add them all the time. Uh, some of my favorite ones is would be your reused password report, exposed password report, and weak password report. The exposed password is really great, so if you put all your passwords into the system, which you should, um, and then you can check to see if they're on any hacked databases. So if any uh, systems have leaked passwords, um, you can just quickly run this exposed passwords report, and it will go ahead and give you uh, it, uh, a list of passwords that may be out on the internet on password dictionaries that you should not be using. Reuse passwords, same thing. Like It'll check to see if you're recycling passwords. You shouldn't be. Everything should be unique. And weak passwords. So if you have a simple password to let me in or password123 or something like that, it'll give you that same report. These reports are premium. You can see I can't get them for free. Premium, um, pretty sure is like a dollar a month if you wanted to pay for it. Um, I pay for a, a different plan, a different like business plan, but um, they have this one here. It's ten dollars a month for this upgrade your personal account for premium unlock. That's for ten dollars a month. They had another one that was for a dollar for families. So um, I'll take. I'll maybe do another uh, blog on this one, but but I would think again for most users, free is great. Uh, but if you want to spend a little bit of money, either the $1 or $10 a month, depending on uh, which package makes sense for you, you can run those reports. All right, let's go back to setting up our vault. Um, let's just go ahead and go to settings. I'm going to do two-step login. And so you can see here the YubiKey is a premium feature as well as some of the other systems. Um, but we're going to use the Authenticator app and we're going to use it with the YubiKey. So you can still use YubiKey, it's just not going to be the U2F features, which is my preference anyways. I prefer to do the Authenticator app system. So in order for that to work, you're going to go ahead and fire up uh, the YubiKey Authenticator. You want to plug this into the computer over here. All right. Perfect. So here I have the Authenticator. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, manage the app, like the app password, enter my uh, master password, and then I'm going to scan this QR code. So from my YubiKey Authenticator, I'm going to add it's going to scan this QR code and it's going to add it into the system. So it's going to say Bitwardens issued it with this username and we can go ahead and hit add. And now that's the code. So if I copy and paste, boom, this is now locked in that way. So now in order to get into my Bitwarden account, this one that I just set up, you would have to have this physical token to log in. Um, and to get that second code factor. Uh, the problem comes into now, well, what happens if you lose this or lose your password? And that's where these recovery codes come in. So you need to say review recovery codes. Again, paste your password in here. Oh, sorry, copy it from this one. And then now you'll get this recovery code and you can print it. My recommendation is to print this and put it into a 
safe somewhere. Somewhere you will not lose it. If you need to print it in two places, put it somewhere physical that is nice and safe. If you lose this login code and you lose your YubiKey, you lose your vault. You will not be able to get access to it. There is no way for that I'm aware of for, for Bitwarden to give you access to your vault through some other form of authentication. You have to have these two systems. So as far as I'm concerned, this is great. This is a really, really great security because then you have to have one of these two systems in order to get, uh, get into the account. Um, uh, you just have to, as a user, know that and make sure you're doing a good job to protect yourself. Um, so that's basically you've set up the vault. It's two-factored. You printed off your um, your your uh, recovery key. You've set it up with a physical token. Um, I'll just log out to kind of show you how that quickly works now. Um, so you go ahead and hit the enter the password. It's going to ask for the six-digit code. Paste the code in there, and then now I'm logged in. Okay, so let's install the uh, Bitwarden Firefox plugin. So I'm gonna just uh, Google search Firefox um, Bitwarden plugin. And they have plugins for all the major browsers that are out there. Um, so whatever you use, Chrome, uh, Internet Explorer, whatever it is, they've got it. So we're gonna add this to Firefox, hit add, and now the extension is up here. So now I have to log back in again, Tristan. Bolton demo, here's my passwords. Again, you should be remembering your password. I'm just doing this because it's a demo account. It's gonna ask for the two-factor authentication. I, I recommend hitting remember me and then hit that verification code and you'll see why in a second. So now it's gonna trust this extension. Um, Couple things I would change with this extension. So when you close down your browser and reopen it, it locks your extension app, which is great. Basically leaves it locked until you need it. You can change those options here if you find that annoying, um, but uh, I would highly recommend leaving it at least on browser restart. I wouldn't recommend putting it to never. Um, but what I don't like is that to unlock it, you have to enter your master password every single time. And, uh, and if you don't hit that save the two-factor login, then you have to enter your two-factor every single time. That gets a little inconvenient for your browser extension. So uh, what I typically recommend is doing an unlock with pin, one, two, three, four, and then uncheck this box, lock with master password on browser restart. That was my mistake. So now I'll do that quickly again. Now, if you um, load Firefox fresh, there it is, it's locked in the corner here. And if I click it, it's gonna ask for just the pin, I hit enter, and then now it's unlocked. So it's it's a really nice safety feature without too much inconvenience. Uh, I wouldn't recommend entering your master password every single time to unlock it. Like it's a little uh, burdensome, plus then people can get your master password if they have a key logger or something like that on. Um, I think a pin is more than sufficient. A couple other quick settings I would change here include going to options, I would enable autofill on page load. Some people would not like this. Some people would like this. For the average user, I think it's fine. I think where it becomes dangerous is if there's a phishing site that tricks this um, app into entering your username and password into the into the system, it could capture it. So for security purposes, you can leave it disabled um, or you could enable it if you're used to LastPass and it just automatically populates the password in there. This is really... Um, it's really up to you. I, I don't have a really strong opinion one way or another. I know security people would jump up and down and say, don't check it. I know consumer people that are, are used to a little bit less friction would say, it's it's not that big of a deal. You can check it. So that's use it that up to your own discretion. Um, you can also change the base domain to different uh, expressions. Base domain should be fine for most users, but host is a little bit more specific if you find that you're going to... Um, uh, different like specific subdomains of a domain. So some more tech people would appreciate host versus base domain. Again, the average user base domain should be fine. Okay guys, so I hope you found that helpful. Um, I ran out a little bit of time there on the one-time password, but um, I, can, I can try to demo that again in another video. It's a premium feature where you can actually uh, get Bitwarden to store your second factor. There's very specific use cases for it. I don't recommend that you use that for a lot of options. I think the Bitwarden free offer is great. It's my by far my number one recommendation. Uh, unsponsored, just pure you know experience uh, when it comes to password managers. I think it's far better than LastPass. Um, it's far more secure than any of the ones that are out there. Uh, Bitwarden's highly recommended by many security experts, and the big reason for that is um, that it's open source, so this code's been able to be scrutinized. 
That's not to say the other systems aren't as secure. It's just harder to verify because we can't see the source code. Um, highly recommend picking up a YubiKey if you haven't already. I've got lots of videos about how to secure your stuff with YubiKeys. Having a physical token that's your second factor authentication is highly recommended. Uh, SMS or even um, Google Authenticator and other Authenticator apps, Microsoft Authenticator, YubiKey Authenticator, um, that, uh, sorry, not YubiKey Authenticator, um, LastPass Authenticator. Those Authenticator apps where the token, the private keys actually stored on your cell phone, or worse, even an SMS going to your cell phone, we're seeing more and more attacks being able to capture those codes out. We have haven't seen anything yet being able to physically get a hold of one of these keys and get the codes off of them. Um, so unless they have physical access to this key, they're not getting that second factor, which can help secure your accounts. Um, keep in mind those password phrases as well, right? Password phrases are far more secure than password words. So password phrase, you know, Tristan is a great YouTuber, um, you know, those kinds of things that you would remember. Uh, any phrase that's personal, uh, but longer and switch out some numbers and letters um, can help really secure your accounts as well. So anyways, I hope you guys found that video uh, that video helpful, definitely check out Bitwarden if you're looking for a password manager or if you're looking for a better password manager than what you already have. Uh, comment below what your experience has been. I'm curious what password managers people are out there using now. And if you've switched, how did you find that switch, either to Bitwarden or something else? Hit subscribe because I'm going to be covering a lot of security stuff, um, especially with YubiKeys. But we're going to cover gaming accounts and uh, password managers and all different kinds of accounts that you guys would have out there, social media accounts. And if you want to know how to secure them, we're going to be pumping out videos to show you how to do that. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.